Morning, folks. Should we stand together and worship? Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around is shaken. And I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. Faithful through generations, so why would he fail now? He won't, he won't. Yes, I've still got joy in chaos. I've got peace that makes no sense. And I won't be going under I'm not held by my own strength Cause I've built my life on Jesus He's never let me down Faithful through every season So why would he fail now? Please take a seat. My name's Yvonne. 
and we? I'm Simon. Hi. Lovely to see you this morning. How are we feeling? I'm sorry it's cold once again, but you know the deal. We're very, very sorry. But um, please do try and keep warm if you can. Feel free to put your coats on, all the usual stuff. But we are here in St. Phillips. Yeah, uh, welcome, especially if you're new. Uh, welcome to, if you're online as well. It's great to see you. Um, if you're new, uh, make yourselves known to us. We'd love to get to know you more, to be able to get you more stuck in and involved with everything that goes on in the church. We'd love to give you a free cup. Uh, yes, grab your branded, free cup. Loads of styles and colours to choose from. So find us after for more information. <laughs> and if you want any more information, please do scan the QR code on the back of the chairs or anywhere around that you see absolutely lots of information about what we do here and how we get involved in the community. Okay, as it's Easter, okay, so youth church, kids church, it's going to be done a little bit differently today. So uh, if you've got mini kids that between zero and five, the room is ready upstairs, but it needs to be supervised by you guys as parents, okay? But what we have done for you is we have set up a live stream which means you can hear all the wonderful things that are happening in the service upstairs, but we would just ask that you stay with the children upstairs. Um, unfortunately, we do need to give our um, volunteers a bit of a break, and that's happening at Easter. Um, and then if you've got six to 11-year-olds, they are also meeting upstairs in the office, and so we've got lots of activities planned for uh, the young people as well. Um, and then anyone else who's over that and under, you're hanging with us. It's all right, yeah? It's all right. We're good. We've got some big things planned for you as well. Yes, we right. do. Um, we're good. <laughs> no. <laughs> more, more will be revealed. More will be revealed. <laughs> but for now, uh, we are going to lead back into a time of worship. Um, so, that's right, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> we're supposed to be the dream team, Simon. I mean, what's happening here in that? We, we've got it, we've got it, don't worry. Okay, so yeah, as Simon said, we're going to be leading into a time of uh, worship. Yeah, if you'd, if you'd like to stand um, as I pray for us uh, before we begin. We should encourage you, if you um, feel comfortable to, to just open out your arms, your hands in front of you, um, like you're receiving a gift. Just Holy Spirit, we welcome your presence here. meet with us this morning, fill us afresh. Jesus, thank you that we are free and able to worship you without any barriers, Lord. thousand generations falling down in worship sing a song of ages to the Lamb and all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing a song of ages to the Lamb your name is the highest your name is the greatest your name stands above the all of all thrones and dominions and all powers and positions your name stands above the all and the angels cry oh creation cries holy you are lifted high holy holy forever sing the angels cry and all the angels cry holy all creation Holy, you will live. 
your face. As we sing, as we pray for love, us again, would you show us? Would you show us your face as we sing, as we pray for love, us again? Would you show us your face as we sing, as we pray for love, us again? Flood us with. You're the God of majesty, fill the room with heaven. It's the air we long to breathe. Sing flood us with your presence, flood us with your presence. You're the God of majesty, fill the room with heaven. It's the air we long to breathe. Spirit of the living God, fall on us, fall on us. Spirit of the living God, fall on us, we pray. 
as we sing, as we pray for us again. Would you show us your face as we sing, as we pray for us again? Would you show us your face as we sing, as we pray for us again? Would you show us your face as we sing, as we pray for us again? Spirit of the living God, fall on us, fall on us, Spirit of the living God, fall on us, we on us. Fall on us as we pray. Come Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this space. Father God, as we meet today, I pray that the Holy Spirit would come. I pray that the Holy Spirit would come in power fall on us here in Greater Manchester. Come like a rushing wind, Lord God, because we need you. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Father God, I pray as we are singing worship to you, Lord, reaching out, asking for more of you, Lord God, I pray that you would speak to us. I pray that the Holy Spirit would fall on Manchester, Lord God, and waken us again, Lord, to your power and your presence, that you can come and heal, heal relationships, Lord Jesus, heal our bodies, Lord Jesus, heal our minds and our spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, because we need you. Come, Holy Spirit. You are welcome. Father God, I pray that you would descend upon this building like we have never seen before that you would open our hearts to hear your word, Lord God. That we would not shy away, but we would be open, that we would receive your word here in this space. Come, Holy Spirit, Father, because we need you. Manchester needs you. The world needs you. Father, we pray for peace. We pray for our leaders, Lord God. We pray for a reconciliation, Lord, of relationships, of countries, of power and of peace. Come, Holy Spirit, because we need you. Come, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. We can do nothing without you, Lord God. Come, Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this space. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We pray and we wait in expectation because you will do it. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ and we call upon that power now. Come, Lord. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. You satisfy my soul, and only you satisfy. We need you, Lord. Thank only you, Jesus. you satisfy this soul, and only you satisfy. So, Father, as we prepare our hearts to hear the word, Lord, I pray that you would open us. There are some of us that are feeling closed off. I pray 
that we would just lift our heads and open our hearts and say, maybe this could be the message that can change things. Maybe this is the opportunity where things are going to change. Father, open every one of our hearts to receive your Lord, to receive your message, to receive your word, because you can do it. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you, Lord, in your mighty name. Thanks, everyone. Hi, everyone. Please have a seat. If we've not met before, my name's Gareth. I'm the vicar here. It's great to um, welcome you. If uh, you're a newcomer here, then especially warm. Well, it's not really warm, but, you know, a warm welcome, uh, at least. Um, it's my fault it's cold. Sorry. I turned the heating off at, on Easter Day and then forgot to turn it back on. So if you want to blame anyone, you can blame me. So sorry. Um, it's what? Okay. I didn't hear that. Internet or heating? Oh yes, yes. We um, we yes, we have options at the moment. It's uh, either we have the internet working or we feel warm. And this morning we've got neither, so that's good, isn't it? That's good. Um, I'm not here to do that. I'm here to introduce our um, our preacher to us uh, today. But before I do that, as we were worshiping, um, I, the Lord kept bringing to mind um, a, a little gardening tool. I don't know if uh, you use one of these or know one of them, but you know a little gardening tool that's got three prongs like that, and you use it for kind of weeding and you just nudging the soil around to soften it up, to plant new things or to get things that are not meant to be there out of the way, and how rainfall softens the ground to enable us to, to work the ground, the soil, effectively. And um, I don't know about you, but sometimes as we're singing repetitive songs, it feels like, oh, I'm captured in wonder, love, and praise, and this is extraordinary. And sometimes I'm like, can we just sing another song? (laughs) But sometimes that repetition is a form of meditation, of us allowing those phrases to do the work that that little tool does in the garden, in our hearts. It allows the rain to fall on our spirit, to soften us, to be ready to hear what it is that the Lord's wanting to say to us. And that was the image that came to mind, and I just felt like I wanted to to share that, because I think the Lord does want to speak to us today, as Yvonne was praying. Our world needs uh, the love of Jesus, uh, as we all recognize every time we see the news. Um, And what the world needs to hear is the voice of the Father reminding us, hallelujah, Christ is risen. He's risen indeed, hallelujah. It's worth remembering, it's still Easter season, the Lord Jesus is risen from the dead. And his Holy Spirit is at work in this world through his church, you and me. Yeah, sometimes the institution doesn't look very much like it, Fair point. We do our best. There's brokenness within institutions as well as people. But the church is seeking to be the taste of the love of God in this world. Something that we were celebrating last week is we had 11 people baptized in our hot tub, which was very exciting to do last Sunday. Um, And uh, do go back and watch it. Sorry it wasn't live. Somebody told me they were watching the live stream from last... uh, on last week, and uh, were really excited until they realised they were watching one from a previous year. Um, so they were like, "This feels all very familiar." It's because it was. Uh, it was another service, but it is online now, even though it wasn't. It wasn't live. Um, the reason I'm saying all of this is a preamble. It sounds like a preach. I know. I'm sorry. Um, is because uh, the person who's here to speak to us today, Helly Glynn, is a friend of Lizzie's and mine. We've known Helly for decades. And she functions in the church where she serves in Cheltenham. She's on the staff team at the church in Cheltenham. And she functions in in a role of a prophet. And the role of the prophet in the Old Testament was somebody who would speak God's word to God's people to call them back to him. And the role of the prophet was also to speak a, a word of challenge to those who don't follow God, to invite them to him. 
And we're really excited to have Heli here speaking to us. We've been um, excited for her to come and do a new wine celebration, which she's doing tonight, so other churches will gather as well. But we're like, could you speak to our church on the Sunday morning? And so we're really excited for Heli uh, Glynn. She's married to a lovely man called Mike, who's not been able to travel up this uh, weekend with her. But through Mike, she inherited four children Yes, Heli. Uh, so stepmom to four kids, married to Mike, uh, leads or helps lead a church in Cheltenham and uh, is on the British Isles Council of Prophets, which sounds very important, doesn't it? Um, so prophecy, it says in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3, is for strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. That's what prophecy does. So I'm going to pray and then Heli's going to come. Heli, why don't you come up and we'll welcome you. Let's welcome Heli and then I'll pray for her as she brings God's word to us. Lord Jesus, thank you for Heli. Uh, thank you for the way that she's uh, been such a good friend to Lizzie and I for so many years. Thank you. Well, obviously she's not that old, so not very many years, a few years. Uh, uh, thank you, Lord, for the way that you've used her to faithfully speak your word to your church, that we might become all that you want us to be, in demonstrating your love and your grace and your goodness in the world in which we live. Would you pour out your spirit on her and through her? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I was trying to work out the actual facts and numbers. Oh, thanks, Lizzie. And I reckon it's about 20 years we've been doing leadership together around. So that's quite... That's obviously only five. <laughs> my, my husband said, get all your rubbish jokes out at the beginning. I was like, on strict instructions. I'm not sure I can do that because I just think I'm really funny sometimes. <laughs> And I'm actually not, so just humour me, guys. Hello, nice to be with you. What a fabulous building. I mean, it's fairly grand. I know, slightly cold. I'm glad you got the blankets on. Well done, girls. Um, so, yes, I've been really listening to Holy Spirit for you guys. And um, so I've got a sort of a sense of what I think the Lord wants to say um, through a very random passage. So you'll have to just humour me on that one as well, I'm afraid. But I thought I'd introduce you to my family first. Is that okay to put the slide up? Can you see them? There they are. So I got these for free, for free children. <laughs> Send instructions for teenagers, please, if you've got any, because I didn't get the memo. Um, but yeah, this is my husband's, and he can't be here because he sells paintball kit, and um, their orders are very busy. <laughs> so he's quite stressed about tomorrow morning's um, unboxing of lots of guns in, like, Sounds a bit awful to say that, but yeah. And uh, wheels, electric unicycles that can go really fast in a forest at like 60 miles an hour. So if you want a midlife crisis toy, my husband's the man. <laughs> but yeah, so he's busy doing that. And then um, I, did, uh, I did also get in trouble for showing this slide once before when I was visiting a church. And apparently, like the little guy, the furry guy, obviously, in the corner of the hamster, that was bought for my stepdaughter, Bells, but it's obviously mine now. And um, apparently that's bigger than all the children <laughs> on the photo. <laughs> so that shows who gives me the most affection. <laughs> Although he did bit my, bite my dad the other day, so that was a bit awkward. Anyway, moving on, you don't need to know about my hamster. <laughs> Let's get to the word of the Lord. Anyway, does anyone feel like they could appreciate or do with not just the wisdom of people and the opinions of people, but the wisdom of God. Does anyone feel like they get, can get a lot of knowledge about anything, but could really do with some supernatural, sharp, clear knowledge that God has? I'm here to tell you God can do that. And I'm a result of that, <laughs> not me personally, although my, I was very prayed for by my parents, so it's like a miracle, but that's a whole other story. But I have really felt God at various times in my life give me some clarity and some direction on things that none of my friends were giving me, even though they were really well-meaning. <laughs> and I've had wisdom from God to do things or have a sudden thought that I thought, I know that did not come from me. And it's just had a really great result in another, what could have gone 
one of two ways. And so I really think we're in an era in the church where we need to be hearing the voice of God. It's, quite, it's easy to tell God how we feel. It's easy to be in a community and chat and process things through. And both of those things are extremely important, don't get me wrong. But unless we have a two-way conversation with God, we haven't really got a relationship with him. <laughs> Because all through the Bible, I won't go through everything. I was thinking I'll do a whole, like, go from Genesis right to Revelation of all the times God speaks. And it would be like me firing one of my husband's paintball guns at you and just be like, because there is so many times where God is speaking. It's endless. And so we have to realize from Scripture, there is a template of the Lord wanting to talk with us, his people, his children, And so if you feel like I could do with a bit of excitement or I could do with a bit of sharpness in hearing the voice of God, welcome to the family today. I'm in the same place and I'm just really excited about what God wants to say. So I thought I'd start off with just a scripture from Jeremiah 33 that just kind of basically summarizes it for me. He says, this is um, what Jeremiah is saying about what God is saying, really. So he's passing it on, which is all a prophet is. You hear God, you pass it on. So he says this, the Lord who made the earth, the Lord who formed it, who established it, listen to these phrases, he formed it, he established it, the Lord is his name, he is the Lord, he says this, call to me and I will answer. I will show you great, unsearchable things you do not know. That's both spine-tinglingly terrifying (laughs) and also utterly incredibly exciting, isn't it? And so do you believe that Jesus, by his spirit today, wants to talk with you? He does. (laughs) He will. And I've got a verse to back it up. You'll be pleased to know. Jesus himself in John 10 says, My sheep hear my voice. I know them. And they follow me. So a couple of examples from the Bible where God gives supernatural wisdom and supernatural knowledge. So Solomon was, he asked for wisdom from God, didn't he? And he had this weird situation where two women came with a squabbling over a baby. Whose is the baby? Have you ever read a weirder bit? <laughs> that's my baby. No, that's my baby. No, I want that baby. No, it's mine. And, you know, welcome to the world of humanity where we're squabbling over something. <laughs> this was a baby. And then Solomon just had this sudden, because he'd asked for wisdom, he had this sudden thought, supernatural thought from God, Well, I'll suggest I won't actually do this, but this will be the baiting question. Why don't we cut the baby in half? Like, don't try this at home, kids. (laughs) And actually, it exposed who was the real mum. Now, in your wildest imaginations, would you have ever thought that could be the good, the strategy to work out who's the real (laughs) mum? There's an example, so strange. The disciples were trying to, you know, they they were the expert fish people of the day. They knew exactly where to fish, when to do it. They were really good at it. And then it's, they just could not catch fish. And then Jesus has some supernatural knowledge for them. He says, cast your net on the right side of the boat now. I know you think this is the way, but I'm telling you over here. And then it says, when they did that, they were unable to haul in the net because there was such a large number of fish. So God cares about our work provision (laughs) and our resourcing because he wants to speak very clearly into it. Now, my husband, during COVID, had before COVID, he's a prayerful man, and I'm not sure he would have said that this was a word of knowledge, but he ended up buying a paintball gun and stocking it into his company Um, And it turned out to be the most sought-after paintball gun during the whole of COVID. And he'd had this idea, which probably felt a bit of a weird idea to buy in that stock. And it turned out it shot their sales through the roof in COVID. 
to the point where they were able to buy a warehouse when their one that they had been renting had doubled in rent. It was like God was just like, bam, 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 bam. And it all came through a, a little key of unlocking. Here's a good idea. And he wouldn't have known that. I mean, you could have looked at endless paintball guns. <laughs> and he just felt, this is the one. Um, the, the Magi who'd gone to visit Jesus, they were told, don't go back that way for your own safety. So already we've had God's wisdom saves a baby. God's wisdom gives provision for work. This is supernatural. This is not natural man thoughts. God's wisdom helps us be safe and go in the right direction. We want that, don't we? We want that. So I've picked a weird book um, to talk us through it because I just felt it shows it all perfectly what I think the Lord wants to do in this place. Um, and that book is Job. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> has anyone read Job lately? It's not really one where you sort of put the bits of phrasing on your fridge. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, chapters one and two of Job, we get the scene set, and Job is described basically as a pretty awesome man of faith. He hasn't done loads of stuff wrong, he's living very well, he's kind of like a great guy. And then we have this detailed conversation between God and Satan that then transpires in Job just going through some horrendous suffering, horrendous loss, it, couldn't, it just couldn't really get any worse. He has his oxen and donkeys stolen for a start, like perish the thought of losing one's donkeys. But <laughs> this was his whole resourcing. This was like he lost his business, right? That's what he lost. Then a wind and a storm came and his house collapsed. I don't, don't worry about moving on the slides yet, sorry. Um, and he lost his house and he lost his kids. So he lost his home, he lost his family, he lost his resources. And then, it's, it's awful. And some of us might have been through loss, horrendous loss. This is a great book to realize that the Bible is real. And you don't just get the highlight reel of God. You get real life, raw, brutal, confusing reality. What is God doing? What was that? Was that God? You know, you just get it all in this book. And then, as if it's not enough to lose these things around him, he then gets painful sores all over his body. So then he has loss of his health. So he has lost his resources, he's lost his family, he's lost his home, and he's lost his health. Don't tell me that scripture doesn't deal with our reality. <laughs> And he's totally, utterly confused. And to be honest, who could blame him? But Job 1, verse 22, and I think this should be on the screen somewhere. I don't know if you can find that. It was earlier on, I think. Um, just one phrase. He says, in all of this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. Interesting and still confusing. So then from chapters, oh, hello. That was nearly quite dramatic, wasn't it? <laughs> I nearly lost my laptop. <laughs> Thanks. Gareth did actually warn me it might have to have, take a little moment. Thanks so much. So then the next few chapters, chapters 3 to 31, we get kind of three rounds of conversations, endless conversations. And in a time of loss and confusion, don't you think you want to process things, right? Ooh. Oh, okay, spinning it round. Spin me right round, baby, right round. Okay, laptop, baby. Right round, right. thank you, thank you. Also do singing. <laughs> this is my audition for the worship back. No, don't worry. <laughs> Don't give up your day job. <laughs> oh, dear. So then the next, like, load of chapters, in 31 chapters, basically, chapters three to, no, that's completely bad mass, not 31 chapters, less than 31 chapters, three to 31, then work that out, somebody else. Um, 
there's all this conversation, this processing, this mass load of dialogue where they're trying to work out what earth has happened, and it's Job with his three friends. And this is where it gets so interesting, because then you've got all this narration, all this commentary, all this processing of all of the problems. And I don't know about you, but I do love a good process. <laughs> I love thrashing things out, and I like to hear what people have to say about things that might help my situation. And that's really where we start this. So um, the slide will be um, Job 2, if, if I can't really see whether that's gone up. Oh, you're way ahead. That's it. So they came to him, and this is what it says. They saw him from a distance. These are his three friends. They could hardly recognize him. They began to weep aloud. They tore their robes. They sprinkled dust on their heads. They sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. Because it had been brutal. They sat with him. And then it says, no one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. You feel the pain of this, don't you? <laughs> it's really hard. And then his friends start to speak. And bless them, <laughs> they're trying their best to help him work through some difficult, painful trauma. And so, first of all, we have, well, I haven't kind of put it in order. I've just done the highlight reel of what they said, because some of it made me just hear myself. <laughs> so, first of all, they had Eliphaz the Temanite. And he said, one of his pieces that he said to Job was, your wickedness must be so great. Your sins must be endless. And then, rather charmingly, he listed them all. <laughs> and sometimes you sort of think, oh, maybe all these problems are caused by me. <laughs> and actually, to be honest, sometimes problems are caused by us. And so he was trying. Then Bildad comes along. <laughs> And he said, well, maybe if you prayed more, <laughs> this wouldn't have happened. Or you could get yourself out of this. If you seek God earnestly, if you plead with the Almighty, if you're pure and upright, then maybe God will rouse himself on your behalf and restore you to your prosperous state. Bless Bildad. He's trying as well. Then you have Zophar, who said, look, God's doubtless punishing you far less than you deserve. <laughs> So basically he's saying, oh, I think it could have been worse. <laughs> and these are called his friends. <laughs> and sometimes we say, oh, well, it could have maybe been worse. You try to find a way of saying, oh, don't worry, it can be worse. So I see myself in all of these. <laughs> and I've heard my friends bring some of these. Not exactly these words, but, you know, because they're trying to help. They're watching this awful, brutal situation. And then you get a guy called Elihu, who said, I like, I always do that. <laughs> and he's, he's not sort of quite as bad as the others with his advice, but he's still quite annoyed at Job. Because Job, he's thinking, is justifying himself rather than Job. And, Job. and then he's also thinking, oh, now I'm annoyed at your friends as well, because they're basically just saying it's your fault. But then he says this amazing phrase. He says, the spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. What a banger that is. <laughs> That's a fridge one. <laughs> and it's true about you guys. The spirit of the Lord has made you, and it's his breath that will give you life. He wants to breathe his spirit into you today, into us, and give us life. And then we've got Job, who's just totally confused, has to answer back to all these things that his friends are saying, try to navigate his way through all of their opinions, all of their human wisdom, all of their advice, all of what they think might be a good key to help him get his life back together. And he just says this, and this is, you know, if you've been through loss, this is something for you. At least there's hope for a tree. If it's cut down, it will sprout again. 
Its new shoots will not fail. Its roots may grow old in the ground and its stump die in the soil, yet at the scent of water it will bud and it will put forth shoots like a plant. I think that's for you. I think that's for you. And then, comedy gold in the Bible, Job also says, and my breath is offensive to my wife. (laughs) What a legend. (laughs) Keeping it real in the scriptures. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My breath is offensive to my wife. (laughs) Put that on your fridge. (laughs) I love it. But then listen to what happens. The Lord spoke. The Lord spoke. So you've got Job trying to thrash it out. I have no idea what's going on. I've got all these voices. You've got Elihu kind of getting there with some truth, but equally not giving that much clarity. You've got all the friends. But then you've got God. And that's whose voice we need to hear above every other voice. And look where he spoke to to Job from. A whirlwind. A storm. Do you need to hear the voice of God? There's a whirlwind out there. I don't think we've ever lived in a more confusing area of life and era. Sorry where there's so many voices, so many opinions. It's like a whirlwind. It could spin you if you let it. So we have to stand on the truth of what God says. More than ever before, we need to hear the voice of the Most High God. And he will speak in the middle of a whirlwind. He can speak in a storm. And some of the things he says to Job are quite strange because you don't even feel like he's answering. But in chapter 38, he says to Job, sorry, who is this that is obscuring my plans and words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I'll question you and you'll answer me. He's kind of like, sit up, Job. You are a son of the most high God. You are not meant to be crawling around on the floor. And let me ask you questions. I am a God who can speak with you. And then he says, were you there when I laid the earth's foundations? Tell me if you understand. Did you know who marked off the earth's dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched it out like a measuring line? Do you have an arm like God's? And can your voice thunder like his? It's quite challenging, isn't it? But don't we need to have perspective on who our God is? Don't we need to remember that he's not down here? He's the most high God. He's in charge of it all. And then he points to some strange things to contextualize what's happened to Job. He starts listing things that he's created and listing things that are operational in the world. And he talks about this strange, these strange monstrous creatures called a behemoth and a leviathan. And he says, look at this behemoth. There's power in its belly muscles, its tail sways like cedar, its bones are tubes of bronze, it's got limbs like rods of iron, terrifying. And then he talks about Leviathan, and he says, could you pull that Leviathan with a fish hook? Could you tie its tongue? It's fiery, snorting smoke, you'll be marked by its teeth if you get too close. Even water starts to boil because of the commotion it makes. It can stir things up in the depths. I wonder if any of you guys have felt you've taken a hit from a behemoth or a leviathan. And then he says these words. This is God's words. Everything under heaven belongs to me. This earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And things can cause commotion spiritually. 
emotionally, physically. We can feel we've been whacked by a tail. We can feel we've been marked by someone's biting tongues and words and fiery darts. But God is in charge. And then Job responds and he says, God, I know you can do all things. No purpose of yours can be thwarted. And then God's cross with his friends. He says, my anger burns against you guys. You have not spoken of me what is right as my servant Job has. And then this is said. It said, after Job prayed for his friends. Goodness me, isn't that amazing? (laughs) Job prayed for them. (laughs) After all their careless words, after all their trying hard, he was able to show some grace. (laughs) Teach me God. (laughs) to be able to do that. He prayed for them. Then it says this. The Lord restored his fortunes. The Lord gave him twice as much as he had before. All his brothers and sisters and everyone who had known him came and ate with him in his house. The Lord blessed the latter part of Job's life more than the former part. He had 14,000 sheep, as you do, (laughs) 6,000 camels, exactly, props to that kid, a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand donkeys. And that, my friends, is what God wants to do for you. If you have had brutal robberies, he wants to restore you. If you have had loss of home, loss of resources, or you have a fear of that, loss of family, he's going to break the power of that today. And he doesn't just restore what's now. He's conscious of what will come after you. Because you will leave a legacy. You will not leave a debt. In verse 13, it says, he had seven sons. He had three daughters. The first daughter he named Jemima, which means peace. He was leaving a legacy of a dove of peace. And so will you. He had a second daughter called Kezia, which randomly meant the bark of a cassia tree (laughs) and cinnamon spice. But I looked into it. It's strong. It's durable, it's resilient. And what you will leave and the legacy that comes out of you because the spirit of God gives you life (laughs) will be peace, will be strength, will be dignity, will be a scent and an aroma because it also meant cinnamon. You will leave a fragrance, like something in the atmosphere. His third daughter was called Karen Hapu, or words to that effect. I'm not a Hebrew scholar. Which meant the horn of Amathea, which was like this amazing container that contained basically like makeup. And you'll be a container of color and beauty. Because you are made in the image of the Most High God. And John 10.10 says that the thief comes to steal. He comes to kill. He comes to destroy. Be on your watch for those raging monsters in this world. But take full authority as a child of the Most High God and take up your shield of faith. (laughs) Again, do not let fear take a hold. God says that actually... Is quite a demonic spirit. He said he did not give you a spirit of fear. He gave you a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. And if you've got fear, it means you've got the wrong spirit in operation in you. He wants to swap it over today. He's like, I will put my spirit in you, and I love you so much. There is no one better in this world that could care for you than our God. He's the source of the resources, not the resource themselves. And verse 15, 
in one of these final chapters of Job says, nowhere in all the land were found women as beautiful as Job's daughters. There's a beauty in you that will come from you that is birthed by God. You're beautiful to him. You'll leave a legacy in this land. You'll leave the footprints of Jesus. And it says their father granted them an inheritance along with their brothers. Unheard of back then. And I feel the way that the Lord wants to resource you and redeem your lives is to give you a ridiculous, abundant amount of resources. Not just physical, but spiritually, emotionally, physically. And one of the pictures I had when I was praying for you guys and a phrase I got was gifts galore. And I saw this church being wrapped up like a present with red ribbon. And I walked in and I thought, oh, there's red everywhere, interesting. And God was undoing the ribbon and all the sides of the box, the sides of this church were flapping open. And out of here was coming like yellow, blue, pink. And I heard God say, gifts galore. And what he wants to put in you and unwrap in you today is a ridiculous, abundant amount of gifts from the Holy Spirit. And one of those gifts is the gift of hearing the voice of God for you, for your safety, for your provision, for your direction, but also for others, to tell others this is what your Father God says about you. And then listen to this. This is Job 42. After this, Job lived 140 years. Good luck. (laughs) He saw his children and their children to the fourth generation. So he saw the legacy. And I pray over you guys, you'll see the legacy. And then Job died, an old man full of years. Isn't that fabulous? And I'm telling you, this is a prophetic preach. This is what God wants to do in you and through you. And so he wants to unbox these gifts. Let me remind you what some of them are. These are the supernatural spiritual gifts. There's other gifts, but this is my briefing. (laughs) Listen to this. Each one of you is given the manifestation of the Spirit. That means the showing off, making known of God. How cool is that? You get to demonstrate God. (laughs) And these are some of the ways. And it's for the common good. So it's not just for you. It's way wider than you. You're not just here for you. Don't be ridiculous. You're here for so many others. So to one, there's given the Spirit a message of supernatural wisdom. If you need wisdom, God is unboxing it today. To another, supernatural knowledge. To another, faith. Faith's a gift. Does anyone need faith? It's here. To another, healing. To another, miraculous powers. We could do with that in our lifetime, couldn't we? See, this sounds fun, right? <laughs> This is color, this is life, this is fun, this is living. To another, prophecy, speaking and hearing from God. To another, distinguishing spirits, knowing right from wrong. Don't we need that? To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. How cool! (laughs) To another, being able to interpret tongues. All of these are work of the one and the same spirit. He distributes them to each one just as he determines. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, all of its many parts form one body. You are essential here today. And if you're watching online, essential. Just as it is with Christ. For we were baptized by one spirit to form one body, whether we're Jews or Gentiles, slaves or free We're all given the one spirit to drink. And you are the body of Christ. You are. You are walking, talking Jesus right now. Jesus is with the Father and he said, tag, you're it now. Here's my spirit. Do the things. Each of you is part of it. 
So let me tell you some fun stories. Psalm 139 says, Before a word's on my tongue, you know it, Lord. You hem me in behind and before. You've laid your hand on me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. I can't attain it. But by the Spirit of God, he says, I know them. I know you. Let me share. And it's incredible. So I was once talking to a lady, and as I was in this conversation, I was like, this is so weird, but I just get the phrase, Arthur's Farm, Arthur's Forest. Does that mean anything to you? She burst into tears, and she went, my husband is called Arthur. How did you know that? I didn't know her. I never met her in my whole life. And she said, he walks his dog on farmland, and everyone in our village calls it Arthur's Farm. (laughs) He, this morning... She, she's a Christian. She said, I'm a Christian. I was like, snap. And she said, bingo. And she said, he is really not okay with my faith. And she said, but I can't believe you've shown him that God knows him and sees him. Could you say that into my phone and I'll take it back to him? I got a message from her saying, it's changed everything. He, he knows God knows him. He's not all the way through with his faith, but he knows He was seen that day. We um, have horse racing in Cheltenham. Trot on. Everyone comes in their tweed. And then I walk through like this. (laughs) Hi, guys. Welcome to Cheltenham. And um, I was taking a little team out to pray on the streets. I was like, let's go. There's thousands of people we don't know. We are absolutely poised to ask God for like secret information about people and go and tell them and then we can say there is a God who is relentlessly pursuing you he knows you he loves you he's calling you home and my friend this is not my story I like rather brag about other people's stories (laughs) she got on a and I said write them on a post-it note so they know you're not cheating (laughs) and go with your post-it note she had yellow umbrella and the word Chloe and we walked into town Um, and hadn't been into town before and there was a lady playing a piano with an email address that started Chloe and so we're like oh and then behind her standing was a man holding a yellow umbrella (laughs) which they hadn't put together but she had on a sheet yellow umbrella Chloe and it turned out that they had just had the most brutal family breakup the man with the yellow umbrella was her dad And she was his daughter, and he was there to protect her while she played and busked over the race week. And so we went up to them both and said, look, God knew you would be here. (laughs) He sees you. He loves you. He's got a plan for your life. And they both started sobbing. They said, our family's broken into total pieces. We were even saying the other day, we hate God, even though we don't believe in him. I was like, poor God. (laughs) People are so mean to God. I'm sure he doesn't care at all. He's not going to fall off his throne. But I felt a bit protective when she said that. I was like, oh, oh, God's feeling vulnerable now. (laughs) Oh, no, he's not. He hasn't fallen off his throne. (laughs) He's not really bothered. Um, And we just got to pray for them. And they sobbed and sobbed because Jesus had shown them, I know you. I know you. I knew you were going through that. I know you. We were sitting in a restaurant, Premier Inn, other hotels are available and there was this massive group of guys came in and they they looked like they were in a gang to be honest (laughs) they were quite raucous and we were sitting there eating our bacon not a veggie sorry um sorry I don't know why I keep saying little offcuts stop stop just keep to the point and um my husband was like oh no I think God's talking to me about them and I was like you better go tell them and so my husband's not a small man he's burly and muscly so he was like I can handle going over and so but he didn't he just did it from his chair and he was like hi guys sorry to take this uh conversation in a weird direction but I'm holding this by the way because I think my laptop's about to slide off in case you're worrying there we go I'll just hold it like that I don't normally stand like this anyway so he went he he said from his table thanks He said from his table, I just want to take this conversation in a bit of weird direction. I'm a Christian. And I just wondered uh, whether you guys were men of rhythm and skill. (laughs) And when he said it, I think he thought he was like a gangster rapper because he went, men of rhythm and skill. (laughs) I was like, oh, no, he's trying to join their group. (laughs) Anyway, they went, oh, that's so interesting because... 
we are. And it turns out they ran a music festival and they were rap artists. And we found their festival that they had beat. They were in this really random Premier Inn about to run a music festival. Anyway, and, the, and Mike was just sort of saying, yeah, this is like, because God sees you. Have you got praying family? And then one of them just went, yeah, my, my mum and my gran, they've prayed for me. And we were like, God isn't finished with you guys yet. And you're going to prof... We actually felt they were going to send out ne- sounds and noise that would change atmospheres. And so we told them. Cool, fun times, guys. In the Premier Inn. Let's go. Um, and this is shot, you know, this is clear information that God knows. In Scripture, in Ecclesiastes, the writer talks about there's a time for everything. You know, sometimes there's a time to tear something down. Sometimes there's a time to build. Sometimes there's a time to weep. Sometimes there's a time to laugh. Sometimes there's a time to mourn. Sometimes there's a time to dance. What is your time? What does the Holy Spirit want to say to you in this era? This is what you need to be about. That is, when you hear it, the wisdom of God. Because in a time to build, you don't want to be ripping things apart, (laughs) for instance. If you're in a time to be silent, you don't want to speak. You have to hold your nerve. Trust the Lord. Wait till he says, now, go. Let's just ask the Holy Spirit. He's here. What's What's your era? My era, just to say what I feel God's saying, is a time to rebuild. I think this era of the church is a time to restore and resource. And your resource, your source, is the Most High God. You're not just resource church by name. You will be resourced by God. Things lost will be returned multiple times over. Get with the program on that one. So let's just ask the Lord. Let's just take a minute. And someone once said to me, if God says something to you, it's rude not to write it down. (laughs) So take a note of it somehow on your phone or tell someone. Lord, just would you come, Holy Spirit? We hear that there's a time for everything. There's seasons for things. What is our era? What is this unique context? What is this the year of for us? What do you know that we're stepping into? Not just corporately as a church community, but each person. Give us a word. A time to finish the sentence, God. I feel like someone's got a time to grow. You, you thought that and then you were like, oh, I don't think that's God. That was God. Have you got a thought that could be a God thought? I'm just going to read something now as well from Revelation. When John has these amazing revelations for churches, he writes down loads of letters. And I kind of copied and pasted from each letter how God's described. And he describes God as the one who. Listen to this description. The one who's holding the seven stars in his right hand, walking among the seven golden lampstands. The first, the last, who died and came to life. The words of the one who has a sharp two-edged sword. The words of the one who is the son of God, who has eyes like flames of fire, feet like burnished bronze. Who has the seven spirits of God, the seven stars, the holy one, the true one. Who has the key of David, who opens the doors and no one will shut them. Who shuts doors, no one can open them. He is the amen, the faithful true witness 
the beginning of God's creation. So next we're going to ask the Lord, what are you like? That was John's description from chapters 2 and 3 of all of the letters, the way he started them. I wonder who God wants to say he is to you today. Just ask him. Just ask him. God, what are you like? God, what are you doing? (laughs) And it's said in Revelation that God was seated on the throne saying, I am making all things new. You might want to just ask the Lord this week or in this moment, show me what you're doing. Show me where you are. Show me what you're saying. Just ask him now. I remember seeing a picture of a massive table. And I was like, you're sitting at a table, God? (laughs) And he did this. Tap, tap, tap on the seat next to him. (laughs) That's what I saw him do. And my whole childhood, my dad's not like this now. (laughs) We've done a lot of forgiving mutually. But I used to find him quite absent because he worked really hard to provide for us. And we lived in a boarding school, and so his whole work was our whole life. And I felt very not seen, not known, not like I could go and sit next to my dad. And then the father, God the father, said, come here, Heli. I've got a seat beside you, and look at this table. And he showed me what was on the table for me, just amazing opportunities, gifts he wants to give. Can I encourage you to do that as a prophetic prayer exercise where you say to God, show me where you are, show me what you're doing, show me what you want to say to me. And you know that healed my relationship with my dad. (laughs) Isn't that weird? Because no longer was all my eggs in one basket on my dad. My dad has to provide. Why is he not providing? Why is he not giving me affirmation? And now, guys, I can't stop him coming round. (laughs) He's helped us do all our DIY. He's been incredibly generous in helping us financially. It's like a totally different dad. And do you know the only thing that changed was me and my relationship to Father God and trusting that he was the source, not my father. So do you see how this listening to God changes things? I release the Holy Spirit of God upon you that you will hear the voice of your Savior, that you will hear the wisdom of God, that you will hear the knowledge of God, that you would make known God, that the Holy Spirit will release gifts galore upon you both. These two. (laughs) All of you. that he will unbox this church and color and life will fly out of it, that resources will shoot out into this city, that as you walk down the streets, Peter's shadow used to heal people, you know that? How far does your shadow go when you walk outside? Check, you'll you'll whack someone with Jesus today because you have an overflow of the Spirit of God And this is all by the Spirit. This is not really even trying. This is changing atmospheres. This is hearing the Lord and sharing what he wants to say and do. Do you get it? Are you excited? I am. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thanks, Heli, for that um, incredibly inspiring and encouraging word. Um, we're going to enter into some time of response now with some worship. Um, 
just as we start that, um, a couple of people have had some uh, words. So it's Sally around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't see you. I'd actually pass them, pass the message on thinking I didn't have to get over. Here we are. <laughs> no hiding. Um, so I just... Re I've, I've had this sort of on my heart and it's not gone and it's actually got much stronger today. And I feel like God is saying... When, when Jesus was in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, he then was tempted by the devil. The devil knows the Bible inside out. Um, so we have to be aware of that and know that if the devil is so knowledgeable, he will use everything in his power to get you to separate the truth from you know, what we believe. So I think what I'm trying to say is every day we just have to start anew and sift through our thoughts our feelings, our beliefs, and just to remind ourselves if it's not coming from the source of love, if Jesus didn't say it, then question it and bring yourself back to him because it is a spiritual battle and it's real and we need to be fully armoured up. Um, the shield of faith, <laughs> love that. Um, really important. Uh, but yeah, I just really feel that. That's a word. And also, um, I felt this yesterday, but again, this really got a lot stronger today, is it's a, it's a walk, it's a dance, it's a mutual relationship. And he wants to throw his arms around you, but he also wants you to throw his arms around him. And if you're carrying a heavy weight, if you're holding on to stuff that isn't serving your relationship, then drop it. Surrender it. Let go of it. Because you don't need it, and he wants you free. And he wants you unhindered, so he can be a glove for your hand. Be a hand to your glove, should I say. So that's it, really. Cool, so why don't we stand? There's something about sort of moving your body. There's some quite fun prophets in the Bible. They acted out their messages. I won't get us to do that today. Bit of drama, bit of amdram. <laughs> Yeah, Lord, just thank you, God, that when we're in a world of opinions and our own processing, thank you, God, that you speak. And we just pray, Lord, in these final moments together that we will be sheep that hear your voice, that we'd know you and we'd know that you know us and actually we'd follow, follow what you're saying, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. And just to say there's opportunity for prayer. We'll pray for you to hear the voice of God. We can also listen to what the Lord might want to say to you today. We'll stand with you. And that's going to happen at the side, up at the front. I'm happy to pray about anything for anyone. But I'd love to, to just bless you guys with just seeing what God's getting out of the box, the gifts he has for you today. So Jesus, thank you. Thank you that you are the giver of life. And we lift our eyes to you, God. We take our ears out of well-meaning opinions. We take our eyes up out of the swirl, out of the storm, out of the wind of all the thoughts that people have when they're processing life. And we pray for the clear word of the Lord to come to us. We pray for sharpness and a peace that comes with that. That's a peace that the world can't give. And so as we worship you Lord we just ask that phrases will come to mind scriptures will come to mind your direction will come to mind your supernatural wisdom will come to mind thank you God um, just as Helly was speaking as well I had a, a picture of a 
of hot coals, like burning white hot. And I think it was a picture of, I think just a new understanding of God's reverence, his power and his awe and his might. Maybe during the um, service today you felt that or suddenly felt a new realization of maybe who God is to you or just, yeah, just something just kind of floored you or wowed you. Um, And I I pictured these coals kind of covering the floor, this hot, bright white ash burning with such fire that it was pure. Um, I felt God maybe saying if if people feel that they you know, had a similar wow moment of wow God this is you or, wow God this is the the father that I want to know that I want to put my trust in um, if you had a moment like that this morning I really encourage you to um, come and kneel at these coals or if you don't feel comfortable to do that come over to the side to pray and I'd I'd love to pray with you Um, but yeah just as we start to worship now if you really felt God speaking to you through um, Heli's message if you just felt something new about his presence or his love in your life just uh, don't don't leave here without kind of pressing into that more So was when I first came to your throne. I want my life to proclaim this glorious name wherever I go. So don't let me stay the same. As I was when I first came to your throne And I want my life to proclaim Your glorious name wherever I go Don't let me stay, don't let me stay the same As I was when I first came to your throne I want my life to proclaim your glorious name wherever I go So let me stay, so let me stay the same 
I was when I first came to your throne. I want my life to proclaim your glorious name wherever I go. So let me stand. Restore our hearts 
Holy Spirit, come flood every part of us. The Holy Spirit is here. He is present. And if you are in the midst of prayer and doing business with God, we ask you to, con to continue doing that because He wants to heal you. He wants to work on you. And a couple more um, uh, words that we want to share. Um, one of them was that the battle is already won. There is someone here who is struggling and feeling that they have to overcome. But actually, the battle is already won. You can walk through it with the Lord Jesus by your side because the battle is won. And we've got one more. Okay, so I, um, I've been seeing pictures of eagles this week. Uh, I noticed it at the Easter Sunday service. And God really drew me to this eagle here. And then my sister mentioned it randomly throughout the week about eagles. And then something popped up on my Instagram Yes, and it's all about eagles. I'm like, what are you saying, God? Uh, and I've just been prayed for and I've just been praying myself. And the little bit of research that I've done, eagles can see really clearly. They have such strong vision. They can see for miles and miles and miles. They soar high. Sorry, the Holy Spirit's just... Uh, Ugh, they so high because the Holy Spirit's wind lifts them. And I believe that's a word for the church. That if we would ride on the currents that God's giving us, we can see into the distance, we can see up ahead. We can see the things that he wants us to pray into. The things that he wants us to demolish. To set up things in advance before attacks hit. And um, I just want to pray that over us as a church. Lord, I thank you that you give us these gifts. I thank you that you give us vision and you give us wisdom in how to use the gifts as well. Lord, so I just pray for that supernatural, clear, clear sight over everybody in the church. That we can see you. We can see what you want us to see. And we can target our prayers and be the people that you want us to be for your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your encouragement. And Lord, yeah, send us out into this week, Lord, because we thank you for all that you're doing with us today. The power of your Holy Spirit is here and it is present. Simon. Yeah. Um, amen. Amen. So for those of us who are not in prayer, please do take a seat. I mean, church was on fire. Oh, I loved it today. Sorry, I'm all over it. <laughs> Um, before we uh, call it a day, uh, we've got a couple of notices. Um, so firstly, our annual, church, per, annual parochial church meeting. Oh, you a, said our that, APC, right? <laughs> that's right, isn't it? A, APCM, yeah, got it, there we go. It's next Sunday, but there is a bit of tenseness. Yeah. What is also happening next Sunday, Yvonne? It is the Manchester Marathon. Woo! Woo! What Simon did do last year, didn't you? Did you do it last year? Two, two years ago? Was it last year? Two, two, years, two ago. years ago. I mean, we do have a runner, it's still missed, but it just means it's going to cause a bit of havoc trying to get to church on Sunday. So we're giving you some advanced waters. Please plan your route. I'm going to have to walk. It's not too bad. It's fine, honestly. Um, but yeah, so just be, be prepared. But if you are coming to the meeting, just be aware that the Manchester Marathon roads will be closed. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, the church meeting will be happening directly after after the service service okay um and then um heli will be speaking again tonight um it's our new wine celebration and apparently there is a different message so we should all be encouraged to come along again to uh, to hear the um the message um so yeah it, it's not just for anyone else that's coming actually we we should be encouraged as uh this is our church that we should attend also so if you are free it would be great if you could come along uh tonight and join in with the new wine celebration and with that in mind we're gonna finish off with the lord's prayer and send you off into the week with some lovely messages from god so our father in heaven earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin and against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. 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 Gareth is there? Yeah. Oh. Right here. <laughs> Thanks. Why don't we stand for a blessing before we head out into our week? Great thing about Easter is a season, it's not just a day. The next six weeks are weeks of celebration of Jesus' resurrection. So may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen.